Hello everyone, welcome back to another game development episode where we're recreating The Legend of Zelda in Game Maker. And today we're going to reproduce something like this screen that you see where we're, we have uh, the overworld tiles, the screen set of tiles, and we're going to deal with collisions so you stop before you run into rocks. A couple things I'll point out is um, the, the collisions stop you from hitting the rocks left or right. And then when you go underneath, you see you kind of look like you're walking in front of that. So we're going to reproduce that as well. So let's go ahead and get started on that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our backgrounds. We're going to create a background. We'll call it BG Overworld um, Green for now. We're going to load that background. And I already have these tile sets. You'll notice I have a brown tile set, a green tile set, and a white tile set. These are all the tiles for the overworld. I'm going to select the green one. And the next thing you need to do is use as tile set. Check that. And then what that does is it breaks it apart so you can use this in your room editor as individual tiles. We're going to leave the tile width and height at 16 because that's exactly how big our tiles are. So now we have our tile set. Next, we're going to go to our room and try to paint the, the level. And so what we do is we go to tiles here. And it, on this undefined right here, this is where you choose your tile set. And then you can start to select a tile and paint. You hold shift and it will paint multiples. If you only um, hold it once, it's going to drag it around without shift. So we'll press shift and it, and it starts to paint the picture. So I'm going to choose this bottom rock part and we'll get this uh, painted here. I want to make it look as similar to the other one as possible. Um, two, three. If I remember correctly, I think it's something like this. Um, so let's get the rest of this here. Okay, and then we'll choose some of the corners here. the other corners okay and then there was some rocks sticking out so we'll do those as well I think sort of like this okay and let's fill in these last tiles here and then lastly I think there is some there are some rocks uh, here by the way, if you there's already a tile here and you want to override it, you hit Control Shift. Otherwise, if you just hit Control or if you just click without those, it doesn't do anything. You hit Control Shift to do that. Okay, so this looks similar. Yes, it looks pretty close, right? Um, I think the only difference here is that that's a pointy rock. You know, I got it. So that looks very similar. Oh, I I didn't use the top. Part of the towel there to make it look like that so let's just do that real quick and that's this part we just replace all these with the top tile and that is almost exactly right so let's test this out and of course when we do this since we have no collisions in place yet um, i can walk over everything but it starts to look and feel like the game you can almost start to hear the music in your head and as you're playing it so let's add the collisions, um, and we're going to keep this pretty simple. We're going to close this out for now. We're going to go to our sprites, and we're going to create um, a, a wall mask. So I'm going to create a group called Mask for collision masks. We'll create a sprite, um, sprite wall mask, and we're going to edit, create new with this icon. It's going to be 16 by 16. And we're going to double click this so we can go in and edit. And I'm going to choose red. I already have red chosen. And the last thing I'm going to do, um, if you don't have this set, I'm setting the opacity down to almost half so that when we are editing the tiles in our room editor, we, we can see through them and we can see the tiles below. So I'm going to make this um, eight tiles high. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, I don't know why it's not working. Oh, I set somehow set the opacity to 
uh, zero. There. Sorry, I don't know what actually just happened. Oh, I do. I accidentally hit Alt, which is the the uh, eyedropper, which took a sample of the gray in the background. So, okay, so this is fine. We can see through this. There's a little bit of wonkiness here. If you draw over it again, it gets um, thicker in opacity. So, um, about half the top half of the the sprite is is going to be our mask. So we're gonna say okay. Everything else stays the same. We say okay. Close that, and now we're gonna create. Um, let's create a group called walls. And we're gonna create an object called object solid. Okay. And we're gonna do nothing with this yet. We're just gonna leave that there, and this will make sense in a little bit. I'm gonna now create object wall top. And I'm going to set it to that collision mask that we had before. The reason I'm doing wall top is in case we decide to do any other types of collision masks, this one, I can select this one specifically. Okay, so there's nothing else that we need to do except for we're going to uncheck visible because we don't actually want this to show up in the game. We only want it to show up in the room editor. Oh, I'm sorry. And I said there's nothing else we need to do. We need to set the parent to object solid. The reason for this is that we're going to use the object solid in our code so we don't have to write all these cases where we say check to see if we're colliding with wall top, check to see if we're colliding with some other solid object. All we have to do is check for object solid and anything inheriting from it will work. And this will show up in the code here in a minute. Okay, so now we've got that. Now we're going to change our player code in the step event. We're going to go all the way to the bottom and we're going to change this. Right now, no matter what, if the if the player's pressing left, right, or up or down, we are letting them move in that direction. We're going to get rid of this. So right, we're going to let them move in the VX, um, whatever VX and VY are. Let's get rid of that. To check for collisions, um, there's two pieces that we're going to do. Um, we're going to check for the left-right collision, and we're going to check for the vertical collision. What we're going to do is the first piece of code is we're going to repeat the code however many times, however fast the player is moving. So if they're moving two pixels uh, at a time, we're going to check it twice. So we'll repeat twice. And the way we do that is we say the absolute value of VX in this case. So if VX is two or negative two because they're moving left or right, we're going to repeat it twice. And for each time, we're going to check um, if not place meeting and we're going to say a x plus sign of vx y and object solid if we're not running into something that's what this code means it says if we're not going to run into something and the sign of this is all this does is say let's say vx is equal to negative two the sign of this is negative and so it's going to return negative one and since we're repeating for every single um, time the the player moves we're just going to check this every single time that way we get pixel perfect collision up to a wall and so it's going to say hey check negative one is there a wall there or a solid there if there is we're going to stop basically otherwise if it's not there we're going to go ahead and say x is plus equal plus equal to the sign of VX. Else, let's break out of this. We don't need to check anymore. Because if we're if we hit this, we need to stop. Okay. We're gonna do the same exact thing for VY. So we're gonna copy and paste that code. We're gonna just change the VX to VY. Um we're going to move this to the Y instead of the X. Change that to VY. And then Y plus equals VY. Okay. So this is our code for collision checking. All right. Let's save that. Okay, this still isn't going to work because we haven't actually put all this code 
into our room or we haven't put the the masks into the room so let's do that real quick and all we do now is we go to our objects we're going to go down to our walls and we're going to say object wall top and we're going to paint everything that you can't collide into with these walls. Let's go ahead and test this to see if it works. All right, moment of truth stops. Okay, we stop, we stop, and okay, there's a problem here. Well, we're gonna fix that. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you why. So what's happening, you may not be able to tell. I'm going left, I'm hitting the wall, and I'm pressing down, and he's not moving. But it, he moves if he's up. And I'll, there's a very specific reason why. Um, I must have not painted an object there. <laughs> okay, so all of our collisions are working. Um, there's a slight difference from our code from the actual Legend of Zelda. They, they have a little bit additional collision checks here. Uh, for these pointy things, I'm not going to deal with, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, so they, uh, I think there's a collision check right here. Like I shouldn't be able to walk through this, but um, we're not going to deal with that um, right now unless it becomes important. But I don't think it's very important right now. So let's let's talk about what's going on here. So why would this happen? And it's actually because of the shield. And I'm going to go show you. The sprite for the player, um, when we look at this one and we look at the mask, um, I'm going to zoom in here, you're going to see that it's automatically bounding the box. To, to the left is 2 and to the right is 13. So uh, since this is 16 pixels, basically it's just saying, hey, don't check these two pixels here or these two pixels here. Only check everything in between. That's fine until we get to this. Um, and I check the masks and you'll see it starts at zero and the right is at 14. So when we, it, when we turn the, the, ba the mask changes suddenly and actually starts checking for collisions there and it gets stuck inside the wall. So we're going to simply fix this by making it the exact same as the other ones. And that alone should fix it. Let's do a double check here. Yeah, we're going to change this to 2 and 13. Let's make them all the same. That's the one I already changed. 2, 13. Let's see, 2, 13. Yeah, to not run into those types of issues, we got to be pretty consistent with the um, th the masks because when you're changing sprites out, you can easily get stuck into something like that. Okay, left is 2, the right is 13. So now we're pretty consistent there. Let's see if that fixes our problem. Okay. Yes. So now when I run into it, I do not have any problems. And I have no problems on the right either. So I think we're good to go. So for now, this is what I was going to show you today. So we now are able to paint our tiles. We are able to check for collisions and it's starting to look like a game. Next episode, we are going to create our first enemy. We're going to create um, the enemies that show up. Um, what are they called? Octoroks. Um, they normally show up in here. Let's see if uh, they show up in the next screen. Yeah, we're going to create these guys. So we'll get them to spawn. We'll get them to move and shoot. So that's coming up in the next episode. So uh, thank you for watching. Um, if you like this, please give it a thumbs up. Um, leave some comments down below. And if you're interested in seeing more, uh, subscribe and you'll get notifications every time that we, uh, put up a new video. So thanks again. See you next time.